Hi, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana Harris. I'm a principal for Net Engineer. And today we're diving into the much anticipated State of JS 2024 survey results. Over 14,000 people have contributed into the survey responses this year, and the trends are very interesting. Whether you are a React diehard or a TypeScript enthusiast, or just curious what's going on in the JavaScript ecosystem this year, you'll find something interesting here. So let's get started. Speaking of demographics, the main population of responders uh, is from the United States, about 15%. A very large portion is from the EU and UK, Germany, France, Denmark, Spain, together about 39%. The age of the responders this year is primary from 30 to 39 years old, followed by 20 to 29 years old, with a much larger gap between those groups this year comparing to 2020. Primary respondents group represents five to nine years of experience, about 30%, almost the same as the last year, while the newbies at zero to four years of experience had dropped from 29 to 20%. 43% of responders combined are currently employed at 100 to 1,000 or 1,000 plus company size, almost identical to the last year. As a woman, I'm glad to see better representation of women at 6% of responders this year, comparing to four in 2023. This percentage is still pretty minuscule. Let's move on to features. We've seen a shift this year. Modern browser features like an array immutability methods, um, for example, two sorted or two reverted, have gained traction compared to 2023, seeing a 6-10% rise in adoption as developers embrace native web standards. However, a lot of folks seem to be expressing concerns with having to support outdated browsers and having to rely on polyfills, even as these features gain support. Also, a lot of responders left comments uh, stating they are pretty happy to continue using Lodash instead. So it sounds like the old habits die hard. The usage of browser APIs like WebRTC, WebSocket, WebAnimations, WebGL, PWA, are mostly seeing a marginal increase of 1 to 2% compared to 2023. A lot of folks are stating they can't wait for the temporal API to become natively available. As of now, the new replacement for the date object API is not supported in any browsers according to can I use data. Next, let's talk libraries. Lodash still holds its place as a go-to utility library for 43% of developers, down from 50 in 2023, although its growth had plateaued. Animation libraries like Frame Emotion, React Spring, D3, and Lottie are mostly unchanged with a slight reduction across the board in reported usage numbers over the past year. Now, one of the most interesting and controversial part, the front-end frameworks. React remains the most used framework, but satisfaction has dipped. And now fewer people reporting to have used it, 81% versus 84.4 in 2023. Only 53% of those are satisfied with the framework comparing to a confident 77 in 2023. Swelt continues to shine, leading in satisfaction at 92% up by 7%. Solid.js isn't far behind with satisfaction growing year over year to 89%. Vue.js has held steady at 50-51% adoption, showing consistent support from its community. Comments on React are showing strong developer experience dissatisfaction, an overall consensus of overly complicated ecosystem, too easy to write bad code and having to learn it in order to succeed in this industry. Meta frameworks are where things get really interesting. Next.js remains the clear leader used by 54% of developers, virtually unchanged since last year. Remix is gaining traction, growing its market share to 11% thanks to its focus on performance and modern workflows. Astro is a standout performer here, growing its adoption by over 20% is just one year, 19 to 23%. If you're working on static site generation or H rendering projects, Astro is becoming a must one tool. Testing tools continue to evolve. Jest remains dominant, used by 72% of developers, unchanged since last year. Playwright has been a breakout star with adoption rising by about 10% year over year as more developers look for robust cross-browser solutions. Vitus has been making huge shifts as well, grasping larger market share each year since 2021. Tools like Mocha continue to drop in adoption from its high at 54% in 2019 to 40% in 2024. For mobile and desktop development, React Native leads at 35% adoption, mostly flat year over year since 2019. What's interesting about React Native is that its maintaining team still hasn't released a single stable version so far. On the desktop side, Electron continues to dominate but faces growth competition from Powery, which has been at 89% adoption since 2023 to 2024. Build tools are facing a shakeup. 
Byte is now the dominant choice for 78% of developers, making a 5% year-over-year -year increase, slower than the growth in previous years, and solidifying its reputation for speed and simplicity. Webpack, on the other hand, continues to decline, now at 86% adoption, down by 4%. At the same time, when asked if these tools were used at work, Webpack and Byte were found to be neck and neck at 69% adoption at the workplace. TurboPack is an emerging contender, though its adoption is still under 20%. Developers increasingly value performance with 80% citing speed as their top priority. Let's not forget other essential tools. When it comes to hosting, AWS, Vercel, GitHub Pages, and Netlify remain in the lead. However, the numbers reporting using them are decreasing across the board. This might not mean anything other than just the fewer share responders have responsibility of making a choice for hosting tools in their day jobs, comparing to the previous years. Now, let's discuss AI tools, which are transforming the way we code. ChatGPT and OpenAI-powered GitHub Copilot has been a staple for 67% and 48% of developers, respectively, without much visible adoption change since 2023. Flawed usage is skyrocketed from 2% in 2023 to 23% in 2024, I assume due to a reliance on, on Claude through Cursor AI. Cursor usage grew from 2% to 11%, by the way. V0 went up from 4 to 9%. It's not just about productivity. AI is also reshaping how we approach problem solving and debugging. A lot of folks are expressing their concerns with ethics when it comes to using AI tools, especially for generating code. Some even make a statement they will never use those tools until all ethical and environmental concerns are resolved. I would personally not go this far, as it will likely put a huge damper on these people's careers. And that's a wrap on the state of JS 2024. What are your thoughts on these trends? And are there any tools that you're planning to explore next year? Let me know in the comments. This is all for today, and see you next year.